everyone! Today we're going to talk about how to find the largest possible volume of a cone-shaped cup. To complete this problem, we'll draw a picture of the problem and write what we know, identify optimization and constraint equations, and then use the derivative of the optimization equation to find the volume. Let's take a look. In this particular problem, we've been told that a cone-shaped drinking cup has been made from a circular piece of paper of radius r, where a sector of the piece of paper has been removed and the edges here diagrammed in this figure CA and CB have been joined together. And we've been asked to find the maximum volume of this cone-shaped cup. So as with any optimization problem, the first thing we want to do is draw a picture of the problem and write down everything that we know. So in this case, this picture here has already been given to us of the circular piece of paper. But what we need to imagine is the cone-shaped cup that's created from it. So we know that the sector that's been cut out here has this center C, these points A and B, the angle A, and we know that the radius of the circular piece of paper is R, and we'll denote that with capital R. What we need to realize is that if we join CA and CB, if we pull those two sides together, we'll get a cone-shaped cup like this that has a side here of R, a height down the center of the cone of H, and a base radius of lowercase r. Since we're being asked for the maximum volume of this cone-shaped cup, we know that we're going to need the equation for the volume of a cone. So we've gone ahead and written volume equals one-third pi r squared h, which is the equation for the volume of a cone. Now our next step is to realize that at the end of this problem, we're going to need to get this volume equation completely in terms of capital R. Right now we have it in terms of lowercase r and h, but because the problem asks us to maximize the volume of this cup that has a radius right, of capital R, we know we're going to have to get the volume equation in terms of capital R only. So we're going to have to do a couple things in order to get to that point. The first of which is that we're going to have to find some way to relate capital R with lowercase r and h. The way that we're going to do that is by imagining that we cut a cross section of this cone. If we took like a knife and we cut this cone straight down, right, we started from the top and we sawed straight through the middle of it, we would get a triangle that looks like this, that has the hypotenuse here on one side of r. This height down the middle here of h and the base just of this half here as lowercase r, the base radius of the cone. We know from the Pythagorean theorem that we can use this triangle to relate these three values. So we have the two sides here, r and lowercase h, lowercase r and h, and the hypotenuse of capital R. When we have two sides and hypotenuse like that of a right triangle, we know that lowercase r squared plus h squared is equal to the hypotenuse, capital R squared. So there's our equation that relates the three variables. So now we need to get to work solving this equation here, what we'll call the constraint equation, for one of these other variables. The goal here is going to be to solve for one of the other variables and then plug the value back into the volume equation. So what we should do is realize that we have r squared here in our volume or optimization equation, and we have r squared here in our constraint equation. Since those two are equal, it would be awfully convenient to be able to solve for lowercase r squared. So what we'll do is we'll subtract h squared from both sides and we'll get lowercase r squared is equal to capital R squared minus h squared. Now we can take the value we have on the right hand side, r squared minus h squared, and plug that in for lowercase r squared in our volume equation. So in our volume equation, we'll get one third pi times capital R squared minus h squared times h. Now we really have our volume equation in terms of one variable. It looks like it's in, two, in terms of two variables, but it's actually only in terms of one variable because capital R is a constant. Because we've been told that the radius is equal to R, R will never change. And they could have just as easily asked us to find the volume of the cup made out of this piece of paper with radius four, but instead they asked us for r. It's representing the same thing. r here is a constant. So the only variable in this equation that's left is h. So what we're gonna do 
is simplify the volume equation, then take its derivative with respect to h, treating capital R as a constant, set it equal to zero, and solve for h. So let's go ahead and simplify first. What we'll get here is one-third pi r squared h when we multiply this coefficient here, one-third pi times r squared times h. Then we'll get minus one-third pi h cubed when we multiply the coefficient here by negative h squared by h. So now that we have this for our volume equation, we want to go ahead and take the derivative of the volume equation. So we'll get v prime, or the derivative of the volume equation. Remember, we're treating r as a constant. So this first term here, 1 3rd pi r squared h, is the same thing, right, as basically saying 3h. 1 3rd is a constant, pi is a constant, and r is a constant. So if we were taking the derivative of 3h, what we would get is 3. We would basically take the constant coefficient in front of the h, and that would be our derivative. In this case, we can take the constant coefficient 1 3rd pi r squared, and that's our derivative. So 1 3rd pi r squared. When we take the derivative of negative 1 3rd pi h cubed, we'll use the power rule and we'll multiply this 3 out in front and then subtract 1 from the exponent. So 3 times 1 3rd will just give us 1. That'll cancel. So we'll be left with just pi out in front and then we'll subtract one from the exponent to get h squared. And now that we have our derivative, we can go ahead and set this equal to zero and solve for h. So we will add pi h squared to both sides. We'll get 1 3rd pi r squared is equal to pi h squared. We'll go ahead and divide both sides by pi and we'll get pi to cancel, that's just a constant. And you can see that what we're left with is just h squared is equal to 1 3rd r squared. To solve for h, we'll go ahead and take the square root of both sides, and we'll see that h is equal to 1 over the square root of 3 r. Remember that normally when you take the square root, you have to pay attention to both the positive and negative value that could result over here on the right-hand side. Because we're dealing with a three-dimensional figure here in actual space, if we took the negative value, negative 1 over the square root of 3 r, this whole value over here on the right-hand side would be negative, and that can't be true because if h were negative, this cone wouldn't exist at all. So we only have to pay attention to the positive value. Now that we've solved for h, remember that our goal here is to get back to the volume equation. We want to make substitutions to replace r squared, lowercase r squared, with something in terms of capital R squared. We also want to replace h with something in terms of capital R. So we need to find an equation that relates lowercase r squared to r and another equation that relates h to capital R. We already have an equation solved for h in terms of r, capital R. It's right here. So we'll go ahead and plug 1 over root 3 r in for h. But we need to find a value for lowercase r squared in terms of capital R. So the way that we'll do that is by using this equation here for lowercase r squared. So we'll take lowercase r squared is equal to capital R squared. We've solved for h squared. It's right here. So we'll go ahead and plug the right-hand side here in for h squared. So we'll get minus 1 3rd capital R squared. So if you can imagine now, if we find a common denominator, if we multiply this first term by 3 over 3 to get that common denominator, now we have 3 r squared minus 1 r squared all over 3, which will just give us r squared equals 2 thirds capital R squared. Now we have an equation for h in terms of capital R, and we have an equation for r squared in terms of capital R, so we'll plug both of these into our volume equation and then simplify to find our final answer. Now plugging into this volume equation, we'll get volume equals 1 third times pi. For lowercase r squared here, we'll plug in 2 thirds times capital R squared. So we'll get 2 thirds capital R squared. 
And then we've also solved for h, so we'll plug in 1 over root 3 times r in for h, 1 over root 3 times capital R. And now we'll simplify this as much as we can. You can see here that in the numerator, we'll get 2. That'll take care of the 1, the 2, and the 2. We'll get pi, because we have that in our numerator here. And then we'll get r to the third, which will take care of this r squared and this r here. So we'll get r cubed. Then in our denominator, you can see we have 3 times 3 gives us 9 times root 3. So essentially we have 9 times the square root of 3. And that's it. That is our final answer for the maximum volume of this cone-shaped cup. This way, now that we have a volume equation that's in terms of capital R, in the future we could take any value for capital R, any value for the radius of this circular piece of paper, plug it in for capital R, and we would immediately know the maximum volume since we now have a formula that relates the two. So I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, like this video down below and subscribe to be notified of future videos.